Welcome back. Okay, let's let's talk about peripheral vision and whether peripheral vision has any magical properties that are the one thing that in the last 20 years of vision improvement and dealing with tens of thousands of people who've tried all kinds of silly things, whether we somehow missed the magical properties of peripheral vision. And I'm gonna bring this up just because it's come up two or three times now and people have asked me, hey, does peripheral vision make any difference? And the short answer is there's only two things that make a difference. One is cillier muscle lockup. Like, like if you spend too much time up close staring at screens, your focusing muscle locks up, you can't improve your eyesight. For a little bit of context, by the way, if you're new here, my name is Jake Steiner. I used to have minus five diopter high myopia. I now have 20-20 eyesight. I didn't do Bates method or magical eye exercises. No eye vitamins, no LASIK. If you wanna know more about how I reversed my myopia, links below. Now, back to the peripheral vision thing. There's two things that matter to improving your eyesight. One is, do you have pseudomyopia, ciliary muscle lockup? And two, do you spend enough time challenging your vision, mainly with distance vision? So, are you spending enough time either outside or otherwise in environments where you're looking at a distance and your distance vision is challenged continuously. Should be familiar with this if this is a new topic for you. Again, links below. This mainly for those who are currently improving the eyesight and still relatively new and getting tempted by shortcuts. And welcome to try. By all means, welcome to try. This is more just if people ask me the question, hey, somebody on the internet said peripheral vision is the missing magic piece. It sadly is not. I wish it was. What happens with peripheral vision is pretty simple when it comes to the context of improving eyesight. When you look at a screen, you're looking at, you're using 5% of your visual field. You're not aware of your peripheral vision. Now, if you add that awareness, if you go, whoa, I can see all the way here and all the way here, you become actively engaged with your vision and you're looking at your screen with a new perspective. It may help you with active focus, especially if you're new to active focus, it can have, give you a bit of a boost. We actually talk about peripheral vision in the Back to 2020 program. How many 2020s do they say? in the Back to 2020 program, because especially as an advanced tool, you can use peripheral vision awareness, especially if you pair it with contact lenses, not super effective with glasses. People leave those things out. But generally speaking, unless you're in serious tweaking mode, where you're really trying to find the small things that you can marginally improve to, to optimize your experience, Peripheral vision is not going to impact your progress from where you're at with your current eyesight to 2020. It's not, we've tried it. We've tried it. We've tried it among many other rabbit holes and dead ends and stuff. It's interesting. It will contribute to some things. It will contribute to, to transitioning between glasses and contact lenses. We can talk about that at another time. It can affect your mood and well being because people with higher myopia tend to have also, and, and I'm just saying this is not very scientific, we've noticed a tendency of more anxiety and we generally attribute to the fact that your peripheral vision is not being engaged properly. You can't see what's going on. You're behind glasses that are like this, they're creating a visual border in your visual field and your visual cortex is in permanent alarm mode because the thing that's supposed to warn us of creatures coming to eat us isn't working properly because you're peripheral vision is compromised. It also affects things like fine motor control, potentially, especially if you're wearing glasses, not contact lenses, and as your myopia is higher, because you're, you're not able to see your full environment in proper context. So you get more cautious, you don't move as freely. You also notice that people tend to have bad posture with high myopia. They tend to look at the ground more. Again, peripheral vision doesn't work as well. So you need to look at these, like for example, the ground in front of you more than somebody who's got a full visual field. There's a whole bunch of topics, advanced topics when it comes to peripheral vision. Magically faster improving your eyesight is not one of them. There is endless amounts of internet stuff if you look for vision improvement, mainly Bates method and eye exercises that 
Over the year, literally thousands and thousands of people have emailed me saying I've tried it, some have had some initial improvement, it never works out. I'm not saying you shouldn't try it, I'm saying if you're anything like me, you're busy, you have a million things going on, you would like to have 20-20 eyesight, and you just want the simplest, most straightforward possible approach, the simplest habit changes, the simplest things that you can implement without disrupting your life in general, I'm giving you all of those. Again, I'm not saying don't try other stuff. It's just, it makes me roll my eyes. Even though it's only come up a few times when people say, oh, peripheral vision. Somebody said that peripheral vision is like the magical answer and it's much better than your stuff. Sure, I would love for that to be the case because we are a massive destination. I could easily add whatever new component it is to make us the best way to improve eyesight. But a peripheral vision, for the purpose of wanting to get from minus five to minus 4.5 to minus four to eventual 2020 isn't going to be super productive. And when you're getting that one weird magical trick that is different from the main resource where you can find thousands of people improving their eyesight and some random, whoever's a promising you this eye vitamin that you can buy or this exercise that you can do, it's generally just a way to sell you something, right? And again, I'm, I'm, I don't have the most positive attitude because I think it's distracting and it detracts from the goal and it doesn't help our credibility, right? Like when we're, as, as a community, when we're saying, okay, our goal is to improve eyesight, adding things that aren't functionally beneficial and somebody from the outside comes looking at it, tries it, doesn't really work, doesn't help our cause in general. This is why I usually rant against Bates method largely and this is why I'm not fan of big fan of supplements and eye vitamins and all the eye exercise stuff because it doesn't add to our credit to be distributing things that aren't that super functional. So we want to avoid that. We want to put things in context. Yes, peripheral vision hugely matters to your eyesight, right? When you look at the screen, you only use 5% of your visual field. There's lots to be said. I will make some videos about peripheral vision and some of the other things that I just touched on earlier that can affect your process, especially, especially if you're going to use a mix of glasses and contact lenses. I'm not discounting the benefits of peripheral vision at all. It's just, it isn't just as whatever supplements and whatever Bates method isn't going to change or improve or make your process more rapid. This won't either. So hopefully this is helpful. Try to stick with the core things that work, make improvements, keep a log, stay on the track, right? A quarter adopter every three to four months around the adopter year is perfect. You can sustain that, you can build that into your lifestyle, you can, you can maintain that on an ongoing basis. There's not gonna be the situations where you think you're improving super fast, but then it stops and it no longer works. And when you look at it, you're like, wow, I really didn't improve as much as I thought I was. Don't run into those things because they just take up a bunch of extra time and it's not productive and you're gonna be frustrated. Slow and steady with simple habit changes is the best way that we've found so far. Always open to new ideas. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. And um, we'll see you in the next one. Yeah.